per our projections, GTII ended up making the upside move we were looking for based on this symmetrical triangle that has both bullish and bearish price objectives. We did notice in the previous session that we reclaimed the channel or the triangle and that was a very bullish move on GTII so we could confirm a move to the upside. We did face a pullback with almost returning half of what it had gained. What does that mean for the price action for GTII for the coming session? Well, let's find out in this video now. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. This is Arca coming at you with a GTII technicals and statistical threat of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community in Discord called RCAB. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. You guys, I am not feeling all that okay. I'm actually a little bit under the weather, so if my voice starts going out, please bear with me. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I was here for you guys and showing uh, just to show you that I am uh, I am committed to uh, uh, guiding us through this process, right? Okay, so we, yes, we definitely got the breakout that we were looking for. However, the breakout that we were looking for, since it was at this point, we have to actually modify our price objective. The price objective can be acquired by taking a trend line from the hypotenuse of the triangle to the lowest point of the triangle and applying it to that point of breakout. Since we broke out right over here, which is usually the point where breakouts happen for these triangles, is usually as we approach the apex at about 70, 75% completion of the triangle itself. Uh, you can see that the that the price objective based on the the, the metrics of the triangle itself we have direct confluence with the one spot six one eight at four dollars and nineteen cents and the two hundred day simple moving average. Excuse me. So this uh, was the the implied path that we had for the two hundred day simple moving uh, one hundred day simple moving average. Uh, we were thinking that the moving average could actually move this way when we had a pump to the upside. However, it did continue to a lower level than expected, and we did use it as that form of resistance. We were thinking that it would be up here. Unfortunately, uh, that did not happen. But we are moving according to the projections that we were talking about. Another thing within raw price action that we need to be very careful with is this right over here. We are printing uh, a hammer candle at, it's not quite the top because we do have this wick high of this prior candle here. We are on the one hour chart. So uh, this prior candle does have a higher high and usually these uh, hammer candles when presented or shown at the top of a trend usually present a downside signal and not a reversal signal. This would usually be a pullback. It is close to the high, so we definitely have to give this some credit. And another reason to give it the credit that I'm talking about is for the simple fact that we have made a brand new breakout out of this formation, which would usually require a reverse back to test the newly converted resistance into now support before a continuation onto the upside, potentially realizing the one spot 618 or price objective at $4.22 or 419. We do have confluence with, uh, with three potential signals here, including the 200 day simple moving average. Uh, another main resistance we do have, which is also a potential for us to wick up to, could be the $4.31 zone, which is the closure, I'm sorry, which is the wick low of these candles here, and the test of this support right over here, as well as this test of the support. There are plenty of confluent targets, this one using a support right there. Uh, there are plenty of confluent targets that are signaling a potential reach of this area right up here before us retracing and using the 200 day simple moving average, the one spot 618 and the price objective. And also uh, the price objective does have some matching with this resistance candle and this candle at support and this candle using as resistance right over here. You guys, you can see it's right over here. We can draw a trend line. So uh, let's put it like this. And you can see that all these areas right here are actually being used as, a, as prior forms of support and resistance. That is very likely for us to, to achieve uh, in raw price action. And please do remember that I am talking about after 
a potential move to the downside. We do have the seven day exponential moving average, which is uh, let me just go ahead and close the SMAs first. Uh, the seven day exponential moving average is right up, right at the not 382. This, this is definitely a form of support. We have the 30 day exponential moving average, which is very close to the not 618 inverse ratio and also the not 236 at $3.52 which is in direct confluence with our newly converted resistance into support. So there is a potential where we can wick down here and continue up to the upside. It's not a requirement, but it it is common within this formation for us to do that, right? But it, it, it doesn't have to actually happen. So let's go ahead and move on to the next chart and see what we have. This is the macro perspective that we've been looking at for some time now. Um, and this is the statistical metric for this is a back test for GTII that I performed. And the back test is based on a volatility versus momentum profile. And the volatility that you're looking at here is represented by this indicator BBWP. Volatility is direction neutral. So we'd have to pair it with uh, an indicator similar to this one here, which is stochastic momentum or a momentum oscillator for us to be able to gauge that bias and direction. In this case, in a macro time frame, three day chart, you are still looking at a continuation onto the downside. That does not mean that we can't have upside pumps along the way. In fact, this downside signal is confluent with what we're talking about here, potentially coming back down to test this newly converted resistance into support before a continuation onto the upside to potentially test our price objective of $4.20 right up there. Uh, now, we do have a massive price objective in this that it's almost hard for me to talk about at times. And let me just show you how that was acquired. Anytime that we, anytime that volatility has reached critical percentile, which I consider to be anything above this 90 percentile line right over here, and we've commenced a, a contraction phase to the downside, I've taken iteration of the duration of the iteration, the upside thrust versus the times that momentum versus volatility profile has gotten the, the direction correct to the upside or incorrect. And that has given us these metrics. I have also tested the momentum oscillators uh, projections alone. I, I, I back tested momentum oscillator just so I can see how accurate it, it has been within this ticker because it does vary within ticker. So out of, an, out of a total of 11 iterations, stochastic momentum has gotten that correct. Uh, 10 out of 11 iterations, which gives us a 90 spot, 90% accuracy, which is very good, very not perfect, but very good. Okay, so now based on a, a volatility versus momentum profile backtest, we do have out of the 11 iterations, we do have seven correctly guessed to the upside. That gives us an average upside accuracy of 68 spot 63 percent with an average upside thrust of 3,202 spot 47 percent over the span of 32 and a quarter days, just over a month. So this is why I mean that it's almost weird to talk about because that the data is showing that it's the potential of that is huge so now applying that metric to the upside 3200 percent puts us right at about right here now if you take a trend line and draw from this candle make sure that we do touch this candle here in the three-day chart you can see that it has direct confluence with that target as well I mean, uh, another thing we can do, too, is that if uh, we can take uh, Fibonacci retracement from the highest point, which is our all time high here and uh, apply it to actually we're not even going to be able to reach that. It's just so massive. OK, yeah, unfortunately, I can't actually show you with the with the uh, Fibonacci retracement. My apologies, you guys, it actually won't even reach up to these levels. A 3000 percent move isn't even realistic, but. It has done such atrocities. <laughs> Definitely don't doubt GTII. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next chart now and see if we can gauge a bias and direction for at least the uh, immediate short-term time frame. So let's look at the 30-minute. Uh, in fact, I actually created something for for my viewers here. This is my RSI. Th these are my RSI properties, and so that I don't have to explain every single time I uh, jump into these charts, right? So I know that it's white, but this is the bullish control zone, and this is the bearish control zone. So 
we are looking at the 30 minute immediate short term giving us no bias and direction we are however sitting at the grips of the bullish control zone this is the bullish strength percentile so now let's look at the the buy hourly buy hourly is giving us an upside signal with no looking back this is very good it has jumped in uh to to a very credible area of the weakness percentile from the bulls uh, this is very good. And we also are trading above the moving average, which is this pink line, which is bullish as well. Now let's look at the six hour. Six hour is also giving us an upside suggestion. Now the upside suggestion is within the shallow areas of the bear weakness percentile. We are definitely likely to jump into the bear to the bull weakness percentile based on this being in the shallow area. Let's look at the daily chart daily chart is primed to create a bullish cross above the moving average which is very good however we are smack in the middle and that could be uh this sideways trading is is likely to be uh affected by the economical catalysts that are coming up tomorrow we have president trump's official presidency announcement or formal presidency announcement and uh if he does announce that he is gonna bid for speaker of the house as well then that could potentially pressure the markets to the upside thus giving gti the boost that it actually needs for it to be corrected towards the upside uh, there's another chart that i have been looking at for gti and that's actually this one right over here this is a massive descending channel descending channels are usually uh trend reversal signals on them uh, you know by themselves so we do have one test of the resistance here two and now it looks like we are now breaking market structure this the high the high of this wick is actually higher than this one right over here which shows the the breakout of what we were talking about from this from this wedge now if you, if you can look at it now from this this is the wedge right here now if you look at it from this perspective you can see that we may be on our way to test this third test of the resistance from the descending channel usually the third test is something that we have to watch out for because the third test of the channel is usually followed by a larger capitulation down to lows that i'm not willing to speak of just now okay because that is not confirmed it's not actually what's going to happen i'm just giving you the potentials of this now if we draw for example, this, if we draw a trend line like this, let's just make the triangle that we've been looking at, right? And uh, we take the price objective, which again, is from the hypotenuse of the triangle to the lowest point of the triangle and apply it to the breakout. Look what that gives us. That gives us a test of the, of the resistance. So the price objective of this formation is also very confluent with this resistance level. The importance of this four dollar forty cents area is 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 enormous. We do have to give this credit. We have to make sure that that we can, if we're gonna make a break out of this, which I I highly doubt. Uh, we do have to make uh, an, usually oh, like oh, here's another thing, you guys. Sorry for stuttering. I'm just uh, I'm very uh, I'm not feeling well and also reading a bunch of notes here usually uh i'm not gonna say usually actually oftentimes the third test of the resistance is a massive test which can which can usually be a fake out or a or a bull trap because people are going to start getting that fomo and after that massive move which could be the three thousand percent move or and it's an averaged mean remember that it's not a certainty so we can fall well within that uh, three thousand percent and then capitulate toward, towards the downside once liquidity reaches right up here like rich blood from a from just a cabin full of people and a few mosquitoes right <laughs> i gave this analogy to someone else it's going to be just they're going to be rich in blood that's going to be the liquidity presented right over here for short positions to open thus reclaim the channel make the biggest capitulation event that we have potentially testing this bottom right here or this bottom for a bounce and then attempting a true breakout on test number four followed by a actual test of the newly converted resistance into support before a continuation on to the upside the likelihood of that is very great we do have to keep those things in mind but raw price action is playing uh, it's playing very well within GTII. It is following a geometrical sense. So this is this is important for us to measure. 
Okay, you guys, so I think this is a pretty good place for me to leave off the video. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on Twitter, on Discord. Uh, I'll leave the links in the description below for you to consider joining the trading community in Discord called RCAB. But with that said, I wish you well, I wish you a good night, and I will catch you at the Bell Mayana. Adios.